Hey everybody, wanted to make a week one update to the Eternity Shroud Voltaxic character that I've been playing on Sanctum. Overall the build is going pretty well. It's uh, exceeded my expectations for sure in terms of damage. Um, survivability could use a little bit of work, but overall it's very strong. Um, level 95 now. Uh, I've made much more progress with my gear than I anticipated for one week into the league. Um, essentially, I have all kind of most endgame items, except, of course, for the shaped Voltaxic and the shaped Astronaut's Mark. I'm currently starting to work on trying to get a shaped Voltaxic. Um, I only have about 500 chance scours in, so it's I've barely even started, but I have started, so hopefully I can um, oops, slowly work my way <clears throat> towards getting that, so I can get the um, resistance uh, chaos res ignore, and that would be pretty insane. Um, the damage of this build's already pretty nuts. I pretty much instantly kill most map bosses um, in tier 15, tier 16. Um, I just pretty much quite quickly phase most guardians of whatever kind. Um, this build has done Uber Elder Deathless, I've done Maven Deathless. Um, I mean, it's largely attributable to to how you play it correctly. I mean, the Deathless part, but but like the, um, the Maven Brain, I can phase that part in like two seconds on this build. It's just like, it's just crazy how much damage this build does, and it's not even at its full potential yet, because, well, for one, I don't even have a, I'm not even using a six link on my Storm Rain Ballista Totem yet, so, and I don't have the, uh, the shaped versions of the uniques, so there's a lot that this build can still improve upon, um, well, before I get into the gear and everything, I'm gonna just run a map here, this is a grotto with some pretty generic mods and, uh, constrictor influenced or occupied, whatever. Um, can't guarantee that I'll do a deathless. Um, the build does lack a, a bit of defense, admittedly. Um, mainly, I have evasion rating and spell suppression. So that's kind of my main uh, front line of defense. Um, but really, this build's main defense is, it, is its offense. Um, just because it kills everything so fast that there's just, um, you know... That it's really a, a, a quite a soft core mentality. <laughs> so this is how this is how it looks. I've I've did I did switch up some things from the original path of building. Um, I'm no longer running a um, a chain support. I'm actually running awakened void manipulation. I found that um, with uh, with ricochet and with occupying force from forbidden flame, forbidden flesh. Um, it's more than enough. Um, the chain is a little bit, the extra chain is pretty redundant, and I found that it's um, just just not really necessary, and it's it's just better to go for more damage. So, so that was the um, the reason for that. But as you can see, everything falls over pretty quick. Um, build works great for Legion. It does again, admittedly, die sometimes, so I, I may get a death kind of here and there. But everything falls over pretty quick. I'll just keep going here. Get to the uh, get to the boss to showcase some kind of boss damage. So for the bosses, I am switching to barrage. Um, depending on if it's a um, if it's just a map boss, I don't even bother. If it's more of something like shaper or a guardian or something, then I'll then I will switch to barrage just to just to get it down a little quicker. Got another legion here. Let's see, whoa, where is this going? Up here. Typically what kind of one-shots me sometimes is these legion archers. Sometimes they do just kind of randomly one-shot me. It's probably what I die to the most. 
Um, and admittedly, for me, after I got to about level 92, I couldn't really level in um, maps anymore just because I, I just um, just kept dying. Um, so from level 92 to 95, I used um, I used like Delve and I did some Beachhead Rotas. So that's probably going to be the plan to continue. All right, so here is this boss. Uh, this is the poison guy. Poison guy is a little annoying. I might end up having a couple deaths here, but we'll see. If I could phase him quick enough, which I should be able to. Uh, there he goes. So the, the Storm Ring totems do provide a quite a big brunt of the damage for single target. Oh, there's one death. Let's see. The bosses that are very easy are the ones that stand still. Um, those bosses are uh, especially easy just because the Storm Marine Totems can really just go full force. And um, when the bosses stand still, the damage just um, gets pretty insane. So that's the Guardian overall. Pretty smooth. Um, that's typically how it goes. I'll maybe have one or two deaths um, while I do the Guardians, but... Overall, it's um, pretty pretty smooth play style. Let me just finish this map here, and then I'll go back and just go into the rest of the gear and everything that I've got going. Um, I've definitely have progressed in the gear um, a lot more than I expected for week one, um, mainly regarding some jewels, or a single jewel, I should say. If you watched the first video, you probably know what I'm talking about. But I'll get into all that. Uh, I actually do need scours. <laughs> I am also specting the Harbinger. No mirror shards yet, but I have found a decent amount of fracturing shards. I think at this point I've farmed up probably like one fracturing orb worth. Maybe one and a half. Oh, memory. Wow. I haven't gotten one of those in a while. So, that's... Looks like we're just about done here. So this is kind of how the mapping playstyle goes. Pretty smooth. Very fluid. And I, I like how the build plays. I haven't played a Boba in quite some time, so I'm it's it's quite a change to what I usually do. But I'm I'm really quite enjoying this build. And it's it still has quite a bit of upgrades to make. Even um, even for one week post. Anyways, I'm going to loot all this later. Go into my current gear and everything. So, this is just regular Asinos. I don't even have the Lightning Arrow Enchant because I'm not even bothering to buy it because I need a shaped Asinos. I could buy a Lightning Arrow Enchant Asinos for like a Divine. I think that's what they go for right now, but I just don't really care. It's It's whatever. Um, this shaped lapis, I actually, um, got pretty lucky. I crafted this myself just with an essence slam, uh, with crit multi, and I ended up hitting tier one life, tier two Ellie damage with attacks and an open suffix. So that was great. The mana and the strength is kind of whatever. I mean, strength doesn't hurt, but pretty, pretty great amulet there. Six link, my eternity shroud. So in here now, I have um, Mirage Archer, Awake, Added Lightning, Crit, Crit, dam crit Damage, Void Manip, and um, Elemental Damage with Attacks. Again, Drop Chain, just don't think it's necessary. Uh, for the bow, plan for this is Storm Rain, Added Lightning, Focus Ballista, Ballista Totem, Withering Touch. I just have Barrage in here, but ideally this probably should be um, like increased Crit Damage also. So, just missing that 6th length, but again, I'm not really bothering to 6th length this Voltaxic because I want a shaped Voltaxic, so just don't really want to waste my fusings on on a on a bow that I'm not going to end up using for, you know, well, we'll see. But for now that works. These gloves are kind of whatever, so in here I have Withering Step, Blink Arrow, Precision, Blood Rage. Um, ideally, you don't want Blood Rage, you actually want the... Um, the craft on the quiver for the um, crit chance and chance to gain frenzy charge. 
Um, I just don't have that. I think it's a suffix, and I don't have an empty suffix on this quiver. I ended up buying this quiver for like one and a half divines. Um, you may think that's kind of overpaid, but the problem is, is to get a, a good shaped quiver, it's actually kind of hard because um, the majority of the quivers that are on the market aren't shaped. So that's that's sort of the issue. Um, pretty nice stygian. I only paid like, I think like one and a half divines for the stygian, which I thought was pretty good considering it's shaped. So yeah, um, just a random jewel, life, multi, some resists, nothing special there. Just ended up buying these boots. These boots are actually pretty amazing. I'm probably going to use these boots for a while. This is actually probably one of my gear slots that I'm probably going to be not touching for quite some time. Um, double res, tier 1 movement speed, um, intelligence, which this build actually needs because um, we run uh, like Herald of Thunder, Wrath, and then some of these um, intelligence uh, skills over here. So we need like 155 int, which is um, pretty close to that. So... Um, for the longest while I was running Thief's Craft, but I finally was able to drop that once I got these boots, and I got super lucky and I was able to hit the uh, Lightning Damage Enchant on the first uh, run after I bought these boots. Um, the Lightning Damage Enchant is actually pretty big for bosses because this is like a big chunk of like an added Lightning Damage support um, for bossing, so it's it's actually quite, quite noticeable. So that's pretty much the gear. The The rings aren't anything special. These are just some shape rings. Nothing really special on them besides life, resists, and non-channeling minus mana cost. I'm not running Inspiration, so that's why I have the minus mana cost on the rings. Flasks, Bleed Flask, Dying Sun. This Bottled Faith, it's funny. I actually only paid three Divines for this Bottled Faith. And um, because I bought it unidentified... And I hit one off perfect on crit chance. Um, the uh, damage could have been better, but for three divines, this is a, a steal. So I got pretty lucky there. And Aziri's Promise, and I used a Rot Gut here. So that is the gear there. Uh, Grace, Herald of Thunder, Wrath with an Enlighten. And then in here I have the Assassin's Mark, Hydrosphere, Innervate, Creeping Frost. So that's the current gear. Um, this is where it gets pretty lucky in terms of how far I've progressed on this build. Um, pretty much actually have nearly the end game tree already. Um, I got the Thread of Hope, Master Thread of Hope, so I picked up uh, Harrier, Hired Killer, Path of the Hunter, Finesse, uh, Weapon Artistry, Aspect of Lynx, and up here I have Blood Siphon. Um, really good Massive Thread of Hope location. Um, have the Lion Eyes Fallen here, nothing really special there. Um, down here I have my Watcher's Eye. Um, this is this could be a better eye. I do need to upgrade my eye eventually. This is just a crit multi lightning damage. I think I paid like three, four divines for this or something. It's pretty decently rolled on the higher end, so not too bad. Um, and here just have the uh, martial prowess, feed the fury, fuel the fight. Pretty standard, um, just to maintain uh, mana leech, life leech, repeater, eye to eye for the medium clusters. And then down here at the ends, I have my forbidden flame, forbidden flesh pair. I really like Occupying Force. Um, I think it really does quite help the clear and even the single target if you move around so you let them spawn. Um, three Mirage Archers, um, in addition to you attacking, it's it, it's quite noticeable, especially for the clear. And miraculously, I was able to actually buy a 16491 Lethal Pride. Um, if you're not aware, this is a 25% double damage Lethal Pride. I have, so it's 5, 10... 15, 20, 25% double damage. Um, I only paid eight divines for this, which I got, which was a steal. Um, I think it was the like one of the first ones that came up on the server. Guy had it up for 10 divines. Um, offered him like four initially just because it's all I had. And uh, he didn't even reply to me, so fair enough. And then um, he dropped it down to nine divines and I just, I, I knew I had to get this jewel. This is, this is the only chance I was going to get it for this price. So I ended up actually trading him four divines. And I already had a um, Thread of Hope and Lion Eyes Fall. And I just gave him those jewels. I gave him my Massive Thread of Hope, which I think at the time was like worth three divines. And I gave him my Lion Eyes Fall, which was another divine. So four divines plus four pure divines. So he, he accepted the trade pretty miraculously. I don't think he quite understood how 
good this jewel was. I don't think he would have done that trade had he known where and how good this jewel is. Um, so I ended up getting it for the equivalent of eight divines. Um, now at the time of recording, um, there's two up and now they're at 45 divines. So, um, got very lucky sniping this jewel early on. Um, well, not even early on, this is only a couple days ago, but, um, pretty insane. So this jewel is only going to go up. And there's only one jewel that's better than this one, which is the 13981. As you can see, there's, oh, let me see it offline. There's two offline for 80 and 60 divines. Um, this is a 35% double damage jewel, but not really because one of the double damages is on trick shot, and you don't really want to get trick shot. It's just not worth three points. Um, projectile damage, chain range doesn't really matter it's it's not that it doesn't really do anything so you're pretty much spending three points for five percent double damage and at that point that's kind of questionable so it, it's really a 30 percent double damage jewel um i think it's in a lot of the same spots i think i know it has double damage on survivalist and double damage on silent steps um so you'd have to pick up survivalist silent steps you can get with a massive threat of hope but then it doesn't have double damage on weapon artistry king of the hill so Overall, it's an additional 5% double damage, but you do have to spec into two additional points to get into Survivalist, which is, again, it's, you know, up to you if, if you find that worth it or not. It does relieve some resistance pressure, but the um, there's no offensive benefits to Survivalist. So, um, essentially, you're paying two points for 5% double damage, which, again, at that point, you're kind of like, hmm. Um, intuition is also two points, but, um, for 5%, but intuition has a lot of good stuff, max life, evasion, spell suppress, um, this is pretty good for two points, so, and then it allows, opens up the chance to get one with nature for two points, so, it's, it's questionable, I, th I think, I don't think I'm gonna go for the, um, I don't think I'm gonna go for the 13981 for just 5% more double damage, having to spend two points, I just don't think it's really that worth it, um, unless they come down in price, which I don't think they will. So, getting this jewel was pretty insane. Um, so, that is the build right now. So, really, my next steps... Um, oh, and then the one difference I did make is I decided to spec into Spell Suppress um, instead of a, a second cluster. Um, in the meantime, I think... Spell Suppress is just, just pretty good, and it, you also get the crit chance increased by chance for Spell Suppress. Um, so you get like another like 75 to 100% uh, crit chance. So I think for now I'm going to hold on to Spell Suppression, and I'm going to see if, if I do enough damage at some point. Maybe I might spec out of Spell Suppress, but that's probably going to increase my capability of getting one-shotted, and it's already pretty high. So, Anyways, so that is the build. Um, I think I'm going to wrap that up there. So really my goal from here, I'm sitting on about eight divines. I'm probably going to really start to try to push to get the shaped, um, Voltaxic and the shaped Asnoth's Mark. The Asnoth's Mark hopefully shouldn't be too hard to get. Um, but the shaped Voltaxic is probably going to be a little tougher. Um, from what I estimate, I think it's a tier two unique and, um, reach of the council is a lot, lot more common so that's going to make things a little difficult reach of the council right now. There's 1,400 of these listed, 500 online, but Voltaxic, let's go any, there's only 80. So, um, yeah, it's going to be pretty hard to get this. So, anyways, I think I'll stop it there. Thanks for watching, and um, I'll probably make another update in... Uh, a week.